lovely ladies and gentlemen, Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, and purposeful coach and speaker in the world. Hope you guys fired up and ready for a great day today. Jesus is smart. That's why the Doobie Brothers wrote a song about him saying, Jesus is just all right with me. Jesus is just all right. Oh, yeah. You can learn a lot by listening to what he says. In this particular passage, which I will relate today to business and your life and relationships, we will learn from that lesson because he is obviously a genius. He said, you know, a bad tree can't bear good fruit and a good tree will not bear bad fruit. You will know the type of tree that it is by the fruit that it bears. You cannot plant an orange tree and expect apples. You cannot plant an apple tree and expect oranges. We get it in nature. Where we don't get it is in relationships. If you saw the picture that I posted this morning leading to this video, two rabbits, one had a giant head he was standing next to, one had a little video head on the top of the carrot, but under the ground where no one could see, the giant top had a little bitty old carrot. And the teeny tiny top had a ginormous carrot. You see, the good Lord knows and sees what's going on behind the scenes all the time. And there is another truth, and that is this. Be careful, because your life will find you out. Stuff always comes to the light. We cannot play games or play with fire or engage in activities over a period of time that will not bear fruit. There is fruit that is born or produced in a person's life based on what it is that they are engaged in on an ongoing basis. Now, does that mean that sometime you can't get a bad apple? Of course. Sometime you can't get an orange that's all jacked up. Of course. Because we are humans, we are flawed, we all make mistakes. There's a different difference between having a challenging season and bearing bad fruit. Bearing bad fruit is one of the indicators that you can utilize to determine who you choose to spend time with based on how it affects you. Let me just give you this simple litmus test. Think about the people that you choose to spend time with and the people that you have to spend time with. What is the result or the fruit that is produced when you leave their presence? How do you feel about yourself when you leave their presence? Do you feel uplifted? Do you feel motivated? Do you feel encouraged or inspired or, or even agitated in a good way to the point of change? Do you feel loved? Do you feel valued? Or do you feel used? Do you feel like that was fake? Do you feel like, but for real, uh, but for real, but for real? What do you feel when you're spending time with someone and they leave? This is a great indication of exactly what type of fruit is being produced. So let me tell you something that Jesus talks about that was really cool to give you some good identifiers. Here are some qualities of someone that it would be really beneficial for you to consider spending time with. He said there are nine particular what he calls fruit of the Spirit when someone is in step with the Spirit. This is the fruit that is produced. Y'all ready for this? I would take notes if I was you. It's good stuff. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Catch that? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These are fruit that are produced in the life of a person walking in step with the Spirit or the Good Lord. This is fruit that is produced from time with that relationship. So the opposite would show you what is not in step with the fear. What is the opposite of love? What's the opposite of joy? Opposite of peace. Opposite of patience. Opposite of goodness. Opposite of faithfulness. Opposite of kindness. Opposite of self-control. What's the opposite? That, my friend, would be the fruit that you would likely 
want to stay away from. So everything is not as it seems. I was talking with a friend yesterday and we were talking about the thief of comparison. Comparison is a thief because see, you never know someone's entire story. And we came up with this line that you've heard before that we discussed at length, and that is, do not compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. You know the highlight reel, right? In the movies, it's the trailer that comes out that shows you the coolest parts. Do not compare your behind the scenes to somebody else's highlight reel. Comparison is the thief of joy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's why I'm extremely intentional about creating videos when I'm going through hell. By the way, I do go through hell. The difference is a lot of folks stay in hell for a long time and they talk about it and they moan about it and they complain about it and they don't get over it and they just get more and more like agitated about it. I, if I'm going through hell, I just keep on going because I won't get through it. And yet I've been very intentional about posting videos during those times because here's what I know. If you're in any type of a leadership position, if, if you have influence with other people, I am going to challenge you that you have lost the privilege of having a bad day. You've lost that privilege of having a bad day because see, you're an example. You are a leader. You are influencing other people. Have a bad moment. Work through it and then get over it and move on. Have a bad moment. A lot of people have said, did you really have a bad day or did you just have a bad moment that you milked all day long, rehearsing it with everybody else? <laughs> Get over your bad self, suck it up, buttercup, move on down the road. Now I know there's chemicals and medications required for medical stuff. I'm not talking about that. You know what I'm talking about, y'all. Your garden variety whiners. Don't be that. Don't be that. So what fruit are you bearing is the question that I would like to leave with you today. What fruit are you bearing? Not everything is as it seems. You know, you guys know, especially ladies. Ladies, you got that gift. You can you can spot a fake like that. You can spot arrogance like that. You can spot anger issues like that. You ladies have a gift to see through that. God bless you for having that. Man, I wish I had some of that. You guys can tell because you just have that built into your DNA. That's part of what you do. You can discern that. And uh, guys, not so much. And so you can judge a tree by the fruit that it is producing. My suggestion to you is do a fruit check on yourself real quick. Do a fruit check. Go back from the past couple of days and do a fruit check. You do a fruit check and you ask yourself, what have I been producing? What has been coming out of me? What has been showing up in my life? What is my effect on other people, especially those closest to you? I was visiting with a leader uh, recently and I told him one of my favorite answers when people ask me, how many people are in your coaching program? That's the biggest Keller Williams in the world, right? How many people in your coaching program? And I say, well, really only one. I got one charter member in my coaching program, basically just one. Um, and they're like, you're kidding. What, is, what do you mean by that? And I'm like, well, that's my wife, Angela. You know, the true measure of who I am as a man and as a person is reflected in my wife. How am I stewarding that covenant relationship? How am I stewarding that? I don't care if I can give everybody else goosebumps and rainbows and unicorns and all kinds of glitter. If, if it, that ain't right with her, I am off. I am bearing bad fruit where it matters the most. You see, if my gauge becomes how we're doing, then I know I can crush it out here. I can crush it on video. I know I can do that when we're in alignment. Now that's me. That's my standard. That is a ridiculously high standard. And yet that's my standard. I choose that standard. You can choose whatever standards you want. They can be here, here, or way down there underneath my car. That's your choice. It depends on your life. What do you value yourself at? What is your level of self value? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have the ability to be in step with the spirit if you choose to. You have the ability to be in step with and producing great fruit if you choose to. So I leave you with this question today. Inspect your life the last few days, maybe the last week. If you're really brave, go back the last month 
and look at the type of fruit you're producing. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. What's really inside you comes out of your mouth. Pay attention to the words that you use. Pay attention to the attitudes that you have. Many times, these attitudes are showing up by habit because you haven't chosen to interrupt the pattern and think and believe and speak and therefore do something new. My challenge to you today is be a fruit inspector. Check out that fruit. See how it's going. See if you like it. And if you don't like what you've been producing, ask me about it. Send me a private message and I'll do my best to help you know how to stay in step with the spirit so that you can produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. When that fruit follows you around, everybody wants to eat at that tree. Y'all have a great day, guys.